Alright, what is up everyone? This is Lunar Man here, and today this is like episode 14, I think, of Learn with Lunar. Um, and today I am on my main account, and I'll, I'll go ahead and show you like a little snapshot of, you know, my stats and whatever. I don't have too many wins, um, I'm still ranked 19, I haven't played it that too much. I do have some quests, but I think I'm going to disregard these two and play some Shaman, because uh, I kind of just want to play Shaman. Um, maybe I can get the beat down, but let me show you the deck that I'm playing uh, with Shaman. It's kind of a mix of a mid-range kind of thing and an aggro kind of thing. That new aggro Shaman that has Tunnel Trog, and then, you know, this has some mid-range with Fire Elemental and some late-game cards. Uh, this isn't too expensive to make. I mean, uh, the cards that you may not have is Doomhammer, Dr. Boom, Neptalon. Although Dr. Boom is, like, you know, one of the best legendaries, so you probably already have him and you might have Lotheb. But other than that, this deck is uh, fairly cheap. I think it was only like 4,000 dust. But yeah, I do want to play um, some Shaman because I am close to my Golden Shaman, like 60 wins. But um, without further ado, let's get right into a game. Okay, so for my first game, I am against a Priest. And uh, by the way, I hope you guys don't mind me playing my main account because I know the new expansion is about to come out and I would kind of like to stack as much gold as possible. Um, okay, so this hand, I'm definitely going to keep Tunnel Trog. You don't want to keep any of the other ones. Um, I don't know, you might could keep Fire Guard Destroyer. Uh, mainly for the fact that I have coin. But... Uh, I think I'll put it back. I think I have better cards that are early on. Like uh, Unbound, you know, Totem Golem, all that stuff. Sludge Belcher is not bad, I guess, since I do have coin. Um, although, if I do overload myself, it might put me behind playing Sludge Belcher. Okay, so now how do I want to respond to this? Um, I think I'll just play Tunnel Trog, then hope that he does not kill the Tunnel Trog, and play my Totem Golem on turn 2. But then that doesn't really leave me with a turn 3 play, but, you know, uh, hopefully I draw into something. Um, okay, so Tunnel Trog, pass. Yeah, I'm not sure if priests usually, you know, play the Northshire Cleric right away or if they should play it to combo. So, I guess he's just going to get some card draw off of it. Maybe it wasn't the best thing to play Tunnel Trog, but who knows? It kind of takes up his whole turn to basically, you know, use two mana to draw a card. Um, I guess I'll just play the Totem Golem and, you know, I'll be overloaded and I'll just go face because you know I can't kill it anyway maybe she'll trade into it and heal again I don't know and then I'll just be able to kill the Northshire on turn three maybe he's got a shadow word pain okay so power word shield I think I'll still be able to yeah I'll still be able to kill it next turn unfortunately the tunnel trogs will have to die but you've gotten enough value off that he's gotten three card draws but he has put a power word shield into it. So, I don't know, we'll see. I think I'll just trade and then uh, use hero power. Yeah. Because we can't have him have any more card draw. Okay, so spell damage isn't bad. Uh, turn 4, I guess I can coin the sludge. Although on turn 5 I could coin the fire elemental and that would be a lot better, I think. Turn 5 and turn 6 fire Ellie. I think that is pretty awesome. Okay, so let's see. Okay, so now here is something kind of interesting. If I do not coin the sludge, then that means I will pretty much feel obligated to play Totem Golem and Hero Power. But what that'll do is it'll overload me for my fifth turn and leave me with no plays. So I think I would rather play the Sludge Belcher here and just pass and see what happens from there cuz and then I think I'm not gonna attack the uh, the heckler because you know he can just heal it um, so yeah I'll just pass I do have a hex for anything big that he has and I do believe this dex uses two lightning storms um, okay so it's another power word shield so it's two power word shields down no more shields. I wonder if he's got Velens. Okay, so there's the second Cleric, which he'll probably heal. Okay, so I guess he's going to run out of cards before me. 
I guess that's one plus. Um, okay, so Defender of Argus was an amazing draw. So now I can trade. Um, now I can trade into the Heckler. But where do I put it? If I put it here, that'll be four and one. And then I'll have the one mana taunt. And if I put it here, it'll be one mana over. So I think I'll put it here. And then yeah, just trade both things. I have to. Okay, so. Knowing him, it seems like he's been wanting to get as much card draw value off these clerics as possible, and I don't blame him. So I imagine he'll just trade into it and then heal his cleric and then probably play like a four drop. But let's see. Okay, so Lord of the Arena. So that means he doesn't have too many. Okay, so he probably won't trade now. Well, a Lord of the Arena means that, you know, he's still a beginner. I know it is. I don't know. Is it early in the month? It's nearly mid month now. Okay, so I have a couple options here. I could hex the Lord of the Arena. I can fire Elemental the Lord of the Arena and trade the Defender of Argus into it. I can fire Elemental the Cleric and pretty much pass. Um, I think I want to fire Elemental the... Also, another play would be the Flame Tongue and get like mad value off of these guys trading into that. But I think what um, I would like to do is play the Fire Elemental, hit that bad boy, and then trade, and then just go face again. Again, no reason to trade into the Cleric because he'll just heal it. Um, so yeah. Uh, okay, so another rule of thumb with Shaman, you know, I haven't played Shaman much in my in my last videos, but usually you want to play all your minions from your hand on the left, and, and that is because pretty much everything you summon goes on the right. Like a totem will always spawn on the right, and like the feral spirit will always spawn on the right. So, you know, usually you want to place your flame tongue in about the middle, and so that you keep your board balanced, um, you know, you, want, you always want to play your um, minions on the left with shaman. But then again, that also changes. Like, if you want a defender of Argus, something different, but you know, whatever. Okay, so fire elemental. Um, gain four health to the person who buffed it I don't think that's that that is that big of a deal honestly um, so what do I do though what do I do I could just dr. boom trade this in I kind of like that play or do I what are my what are my other plays let's look at my other plays I feel like that's not the best play like I could crackle but that could maybe not kill it if I crackle it then just go face and go face um, Hmm. No, I, I think I do want to play the Dr. Boom and then just trade into that. That way he doesn't get too much value off of the glory. And then I'll just go face again. Um, yeah. Saving the Crackle. Saving the Flame Tongue. Um, you know, the Fire Elemental is good too. The Flame Tongue is good a lot of times to It would be played like an Abusive Sergeant. Like, you don't really want to play it alone. Or you don't want to really want to play it just for fun, you know, like just for no reason. You usually want to play it whenever you have a small minion that can trade up with a larger minion. Um, hopefully, I can get the okay. So no kill on the cleric. Jeez, I don't want to have to crackle that thing. Okay, so maybe I can just fire elemental the cleric and be done with it. The annoytron is what it says in its name, annoying. Um. Okay, so I can't clear the Annoytron effectively, and I don't really want to hex it because I feel like that'd just be a waste. Um, so I'll just fire Elemental the Cleric, um, use Hero Power. Uh, I could use Totem Golem. I mean, the Overload next turn isn't really going to make a difference, but I feel like I could save Totem Golem for the combo with uh, Tunnel Trog and Unbound Earth, Unbound Elemental. And I feel like it's just not really necessary to play right now. And I could get a healing totem, uh, which would be cool. But yeah, like I said, the totems will always, always appear on the right. So you usually want to play all your minions to the left. That way you keep the board balanced. Usually. I mean, not 100% of the time. Okay, so holy fire. One holy fire down. And an Acolyte of Pain. Yo, he has a lot of card draw. He's got... He had the Clerics that got really good value, and then now an Acolyte of Pain. Okay. 
Okay, so Lightning Storm here. It's not the worst idea in the world. It would definitely kill both of them. I think I will. I do still have some other removal with the Crackle and the Hex. So I think that's an okay play. And that means he only gets one card draw off of the Acolyte of Pain. Um, okay, so I think after that I'll probably just play Shredder and Hero Power. Um, yeah, I don't know. Shaman's kind of like Paladin, except, you know, Paladin's Hero Power is a 1-1. But Shaman, you usually want to um, play your Hero Power as much as possible late game just to keep the board kind of populated. Especially if you run like a Bloodlust or something else that buffs little minions like the Flame Tongue. Um, also, another tip when you're playing Shaman with a uh, Flame Tongue and Fire Elemental, uh, just a general tip that I've found to be helpful is usually you don't want to play the um, the flame tongue next to something that makes it have seven attack for obvious reasons like I could play the flame tongue right here in the middle and the uh, flame fire elemental would then have eight attack which then means he's in range for uh, BGH um, so you know that would just give him like a free BGH kill sort of okay so I think if I use my hex here I might gain some tempo maybe just ignore the tournament medic uh, let's see. If I flame tongue both these guys, I wouldn't have enough to kill it. Seven cards in hand. I don't know. I'm always worried about that one big legendary. Like you use all your removal beforehand, and then he just drops like the biggest legendary that you wish you would have saved your stuff for. So, for that reason. What I am going to do is I'm going to make this play right here. And hopefully a Doomsayer doesn't drop from that thing. That's an awesome drop, actually. Okay, so I'm just going to ignore the Tournament Medic. Um, he has used one Holy Nova. He hasn't used a Light Bomb. Man, you're making my you're making my Elemental uh, be in BGH range. Come on, man. So... I'm kind of susceptible to Holy Nova, and I'm really susceptible to Light Bomb. Okay, so there's another Blessed Champion. I do have a lot of damage to face next turn. Okay, so he's got a Light Spawn. Okay, so the Rockbiter weapon is useful for the board clears. Um, let's see here. What's the best way? I can't play a minion yet, so that means I would have to trade something first. Um, okay, so if I go one to the light spawn, that'll make him at four attack. I'll be able to clear it with this without it dying. That will just leave the Holy Champion. And if I use Flame Tongue in here, with the rock biter I can sack one of these guys with the holy champion and then just go face with the rest I think that sounds like a good play okay so boom boom and I'm gonna go ahead and play this right here yes because it doesn't matter if I hit both of them uh... let's see I will go ahead and play that right there and then use the rock biter on this, trade it in. And I'll go ahead and trade with the tournament medic. He's uh, getting that dude some pretty good value right now. With all the heals and whatnot. So I don't know. I I'm, I probably should have went face. The tournament medic would have just traded with the totem golem. Hopefully he doesn't have a board clear because I would be wiped out. I think Light Bomb would kill like three things maybe. But now he can't Light Bomb, so. Okay, so he's just healing. And Nat Pagel. I think I've learned my lesson from Nat Pagel. I'm pretty sure there was a recent or a, an old video where Nat Pagel just totally screws me over, so I'm gonna clear that Nat Pagel. And do I wanna clear the, the one guy? I can't really clear it without losing a lot of stuff, so... Although I could trade this and go for the um, healing totem. Although I still wouldn't kill it, so I think I'm just going to keep going face. 
Hopefully he doesn't have like a youthful brewmaster or something to uh, pop it back into his hand. Okay, so he has... Um, what is it? What is it? Another Lord of the Arena. Okay, so I think I win next turn. Just hex the Lord of the Arena. And go face and win. That sounds like a good play. Oh, yeah. That's the right hex target right there. All right, then. Well, that'll be the first game. I just got to finish it off. Hex it. And trade the lowest attack, yeah. And then just whack his face in. All right, on to the next one. Okay, my second game is against um, a pally, paladin. And for my first three cards, I don't want any of them. Don't have coins, so I don't want to keep a fire guard. And flame tongue doesn't really do much if you play it on turn two, and usually just baits out removal and it just dies anyway. And you don't really get any value off of it. So let's hope that I get some different stuff. Zombie Chow and Tunnel Trog is really good. The Dr. Boom, of course, is not. Okay, so Fire Guards, you know, still okay. Um, I think I'm going to start off with the Zombie Chow. Uh, maybe play Tunnel Trog like turn two or three. So maybe it'll stay alive long enough to get buffed by the, the Fire Guard. So let's see what happens here. Um, you know, he could coin Shield Bot, um, you know, that uh, Knife Juggler. Or maybe he just has a Leper Gnome. I wonder if it's like a face kind of uh, Paladin. Um, here, I kind of just want a Hero Power, honestly. Like, I feel like I could maybe Rockbiter it, but I think he's going to have, um, you know, bigger small minions that will, you know, take more damage from the 3 attack than just killing a 1 health minion from it. And the Tunnel Trog would leave me with an extra mana and maybe I can get a healing totem so uh yeah let's try that out and I guess the sooner that I get value off this and end up killing it off the sooner he does not get value off of the restore five health effect which wouldn't be bad um okay so he might if he just hero powered that would be totally fine um I think I would just go face play the tunnel trog and hero power again um but He's got to have like some other two drop, like Knife Juggler, Shielded Minibot, Murloc Tidecaller. I guess that works. Hopefully, it's not something to buff it. Okay, so Bluegill. Okay, so I'm definitely okay with getting value off of the um, the Murloc Tidecaller in that way. Um, yeah, and then I think you know just playing the Tunnel Trog and Hero Power. So a Murloc Paladin, I guess that could be bad, you know, anything can happen, that one 10 mana card, you know. Okay, so this is a pretty good hero power because now, um, you know, I'll be able to trade really well with the Bluegill no matter what. Um, maybe he drops the, the Oracle that buffs it to a 3-1 and then he'll be able to trade with the Tunnel Trog, but, you know. Okay, so he's not going to be able to kill the Tunnel Trog, but he will not try either. And that is perfectly okay with me. Because now I'm just going to buff the Tunnel Trog. And, um, I don't know. If, do I need to go face? Yeah, I'm going to go face. Because he should feel like he has to trade with me. Because I did get the highest that this could get. <laughs> Man, that value. A 5 mana 7-6. Seven, and I'm saying 5 mana because it overloads me for 1. So it's basically 5 mana. Um, so how would he play this out? He could trade those two. I don't imagine he would play that one, the Murloc Knight, that summons another Murloc if he hero powers, because I would just kill it. Usually Paladins only play that on turn four, so, or turn six, so that they can combo it with the hero power. But let's see what he does. A Blessing of Wisdom. That's a little bit of a counter. But I don't think it's going to be enough. Like, I mean, it's it's enough, but, you know, I'm definitely going to go face with it. Um, kind of sucks that he does get the card draw. 
Um, but okay, so here I'm gonna use this and I'm gonna kill the tide caller so that it can't get any more health or any more attack and then just do this and hero power. I don't know, yeah, I don't know if you know he's gonna get enough value on this minion to where it will turn the game in his favor. Um, but I mean, I can't exactly kill it off right now either. So I think the best bet would just be to go face with it. Alright, so let's see what he does with that. Okay, so that's a kind of odd trade, but I'm okay with that. And then another rock biter. I think I'm just going to keep pushing for damage before he gets value off the fire guard. Because if he's running a murloc deck, he's not going to have anything too big or crazy before like turn 10. Okay, so yeah, there's the turn 6 and Murloc Knight, like I said. I think next turn I'm just going to play Dr. Boom. Wait, can I win next turn? Um, what is math? Yeah, I can win. Well then, I guess the damage did help. No, I think I'm one off. Uh, oh, no, I'm not. Okay. I was like, wait, 10 plus 7 isn't 17? Or, or 9 plus 7 isn't 17, but he had 16 health. JK. Okay. Moving on up to 18. And uh, moving on into my next game. Alright, so for my last game of the video, I will be against a Golden Priest. Okay, so definitely not going to keep those two, and once again, I don't think I want to keep the Flame Tongue. Even though it is a two mana card, and it is something to play, usually it's used in combo with something else. Okay, so a Totem Golem's not bad, but now if I play, okay, so now I'll be able to play a Totem Golem on turn two and turn three, but, you know, turn three, I'll have the, the two mana. Yeah, I would have to say um, Shaman with Overload, a lot of Overload stuff is... Um, kind of difficult sometimes you really got to think out your mana and think out how you have to think out more than other classes like how you're going to spend your mana each turn like um, a lot of times I find it really hard you know to overload me on turn four for turn five when I have a really good five drop and you know I might make a different play then but okay so shadowward pain not too bad I mean I guess he didn't use it on my sludge belcher um, I don't know, maybe he has two? Yes, Shadow Word Pain is like Sludge Belcher's arch nemesis. Uh, let's see what he's got. Like, for him, now he can't really play the Cleric because I just trade with it, so... Okay, so he's going to do Thought Steal. He could have gotten a Legendary, which is kind of scary, but, you know. Alright, so yeah, here's a turn where I can try to think out my mana. I have four, technically four mana now, and if I play the Feral Spirit, I won't be able to play Sludge Vulture next turn. And if I play Feral Spirit now, you know, it doesn't really benefit me too much. There's not really anything I'm trying to stop. So what I think I'm going to do is I'll probably just Hero Power, Attack Face, and Pass. So that I don't overload myself, because at this rate, I'll be able to play Belcher turn five, and the Fire Ellie on turn six. And I think that's a pretty strong 5 and 6. With an already somewhat pretty strong 2-drop uh, Totem Golem on the, on, the, on the board. But let's see what he's got. Okay, Wild Pyro. Is he going to combo with anything? Maybe Power Word? Oh, he told, I stole my Rock Biter. Okay, I guess that works. Um, well. Yeah. No, no point in trying to... Okay, and then there's the Power Word. Man, power word is kind of a tongue twister. Power word. Power word. Okay, let's see what he's got turn five. Leaving up a um, pyro in uh, priest is a little bit scary, though, because priest does have a lot of spells that they can combo with it, um, like circle of healing, power word, you know, shadow word, shadow word pain, death, all kinds of stuff. Thought steal, Velen's chosen you name it they got lots of stuff so let's see what he does and he stole a lightning storm okay two um, relatively bad cards <laughs> like two pretty good cards for for me and he has to trade the um, pyro anyway hopefully please I don't want that thing on the board anymore come on trade it just trade it you don't want to play any spells to buff its health 
Well, I mean, if he buffed his health, he'd probably still die anyway. Okay, good, good. And then he's got a coin three drop. Injured Blade Master? Oh, Acolyte, okay. Um, okay, so that's pretty good. See, my Fire Elemental, you know, play turn six is um, really good value. Uh, go face in my turn. I feel like I was going to tell you something else about Shaman. By the way, Shaman's my most played class on this account, um, and by far my favorite class. Except right now I find it kind of hard to play. I don't know, it's kind of a stale class. I don't really like the um, the aggro Shaman. I'm not really too fond of aggro decks. I really like the, the tempo and control mid-range kind of deck. Um, so I hope hopefully, you know, mid-range Shaman isn't horrible, but there's so many other mid-range and control decks that are better than it. Um, okay, so this is kind of an obvious play. You know, Dr. Boom trade the uh, Fire Elemental so that he gets no brawn. He gets no brawn um, value. But, I mean, Shaman's not, like, the worst class. Or who knows, maybe it is. Is Shaman the worst class? I'm not sure. Okay, so Light of the Naru, and he has my Dr. Boom now, which blows. But, you know. Um... Whoa, whoa. Okay, so let's see. I could try to kill this with one bomb. I think that's okay. Yeah, that'll work. Um, I'm going to play the Shredder over the Fire Guard because Fire Guard has a... Um, I don't know. I just feel like playing the Shredder over the Fire Guard. And then probably Hero Powering and Pass... Uh, if he does Light Bomb, at least part of the Shredder will live, you know, like the second spawn. And the, the Fire Guard has the potential of just full-on dying from a Light Bomb. He seems like a deck that has at least one Light Bomb. And, um, okay, so Cabal Shadow Priest. I'm glad I didn't play Feral Spirit, because he could have stolen that, and that would have been a lot worse. Alright, let's see what else he has. He can't Light Bomb anymore. He could heal. He could Mad Bomber, that's interesting. Oh? Oh! Wait, 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 what did it do? Oh, it only did one damage. That was, uh, I was like, man, what if it did four? Uh, okay, so I think now is a good time to... How much damage face do I have? I have a lot of face damage. Um, if I play this, it'll be two to kill that, and that'll be eight and ten. Thirteen. Um, and then... Potentially 19. Okay, so if I got... With this, if I get 13... I need to get 5 or 6 and I win. That's 50% chance to win right now. Do I go for it? Um, yeah, why not? Let's go for it. Oh, okay. Okay, I see you. I see you, random shaman. Uh, okay. Oh, I didn't even need to play the Rock Biter. Oh, okay, he wins. Or he surrendered. Alright, well, that's three games with, like, a kind of mid-rangey aggro... Or, it's not aggro style. It's like... I think it's um, it's a um, overload-focused mid-range shaman that g gains value off the Tunnel Trogs. And it gains value off of the um, Unbound Elementals, which I never even drew. Um, and, you know, it gains value from just... Because, like, Shaman cards are kind of cool, though, because, you know, you, it's, they have, like, low cost for um, pretty good stats, but then they have the overload. So, you know, if you can, like, throw the overload onto something else like the Tunnel Trog or the Unbound, like it's supposed to, then, you know, this deck gets really good value. Like, Fire Guard Destroyer is amazing, stats-wise. Like, Feral Spirit is one of the coolest three drops in the game. You know, different things like that. Fire Elemental, in my opinion, is, like, one of the best six drops in the game. You know, next to um, Sylvanas and um, uh, Savannah High Main. And, you know, Totem Golem is amazing for the stats. So, like, you see what I'm saying? It's really just the overload that draws Shaman down. But whenever you, like, redirect the overload into, like, a buffed Tunnel Trog or a buffed Unbound, then, uh, you know, Shaman doesn't seem so bad. Um, but anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, and I will definitely see you in the next one. See ya.